Hello everyone. Welcome to Theory of Programming. In this video, I will introduce you to the graph data structure and show you how we can represent a graph in the form of an adjacency matrix and an adjacency list. If we talk about the very basic definition of a graph, a graph is a set of vertices or nodes and a set of edges. For this graph, the set of vertices would be the blue circles A, B, C, D, E and F and the set of edges would be A to B, C to B, B to D, etc. Generally, each vertex represents an entity and each edge represents the relationship between the entities. I have named the vertices as A, B, etc. just to introduce you to the concept of graph data structure. But these nodes and vertices can represent more meaningful things to solve some very interesting problems. Let us look at a few examples. Suppose you wanted to represent the map of Hogwarts as a graph. You need a set of vertices and a set of edges. What could your vertices be? They could be the different places around Hogwarts. And what could your edges be? They could represent the possible paths between these places. Now you know that all paths are not the same. Some could be long, some could be very short and there's Whomping Willow between the direct path from Hogwarts to Forbidden Forest. So you may want to avoid it. So let us add some weights to our edges which would represent the distance or cost to travel between these places. Okay, we have a graph ready. Using the graph, we can solve some interesting questions like what is the shortest path and distance from Hogwarts to Hogsmeade Village? By observing the graph, you can see that the shortest path is via the Quidditch pitch and the total distance is 7. Pretty cool, right? While we are here talking about our fun Hogwarts example, I'd like to bring your attention to the nature of arrows. Usually, when we have a graph of places, the edges are bi-directional in nature. For example, the edge between Hogwarts and Hagrid's hut is bi-directional which means that you can go from Hogwarts to Hagrid's hut and come back via the same path. Either way, the cost for a one-sided trip would be two. Let's say for some reason, you can go to the Forbidden Forest, but you can't come back. In such cases, the edges are unidirectional in nature. Another example would be Facebook. Let's say we have this group of six people where each person would be a vertex in our graph. The edges represent the friendship relation between them. So the edge between Tom and Mike means that Tom is a friend of Mike and Mike is also a friend of Tom. So it's a bi-directional edge. Now given this graph, let's say you're asked to recommend some friends to Tom. What would you do? Let's see. Iris and Mike are already friends of Tom, so we can't recommend them. Who would be the next best person for recommendation? It would be the friends of Iris and Mike. So we can recommend Mark or Yin as friends for Tom. And if we had to rank Mark and Yin, Mark would have a higher preference since there are two mutual friends. Now, if you think about this approach algorithmically, all we did was recommend those people who are two edges away from Tom. And we rank them according to the number of common adjacent vertices. Coming to the mathematical definition of a graph, a graph is denoted as G of V, E, where V is the set of vertices and E is the set of edges. This is a directed graph. For this graph, the set of vertices V would be a set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And the set of edges E would be a set of edges 1, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2, etc. This is an undirected graph. An undirected graph is simply a graph where the edges are bidirectional in nature. So for this graph, the set of vertices V would be the same but the set of edges E would have extra entities like edge 1 to 2 and the edge 2 to 1. Now, talking about some other types of graphs you should know about, we have a disconnected graph. A graph is said to be disconnected if there exists any two vertices which cannot be connected by any possible path. In this example, there is no path through which we can go from vertex 4 to vertex 2 or vice versa. Disconnected graph is a common scenario in networking. In a computer network, each endpoint connected to the network could be the vertices and the connections could be the edges. If there's a network breakdown, then a certain set of vertices could become unreachable, forming a disconnected graph. 
we also have a weighted graph. A weighted graph is when you have a weight or a cost associated with each edge. Here, an integer is associated with each edge which denotes its weight. If you remember, a Hogwarts example was a weighted graph. Now, let us look at how we can represent a graph using an adjacency matrix. Adjacency matrix is the simplest representation of a graph where we represent the graph as a 2D matrix of size V plus 1 cross V plus 1. So for this graph of 4 vertices and 4 edges, the adjacency matrix would look like this. As you can see, it is a 2D matrix of size V plus 1 cross V plus 1. Why V plus 1? It is only because it's easier to understand an adjacency matrix which is 1 indexed. Now, adjacency matrix is very simple. Initially, we have all the cells of the matrix set to 0. If there is an edge from V1 to V2, then I will set adjacency matrix of V1 or V2 to 1. Take the edge 1 to 2 for example. I would set adjacency matrix of 1 of 2 to 1. Similarly, 3 to 2, 4 to 2 and 3 to 4. The rest of the cells remain as 0. Pretty simple, right? The space complexity of adjacency matrix is order of V squared. This is because no matter how many edges there are, your memory consumption would still be that 2D array of size V plus 1 cross V plus 1, which makes the space complexity order of V squared. Let us look at another example of an adjacency matrix. This time, let us consider this weighted graph. The process is pretty much the same. The only difference is that instead of populating our matrix with 1s, we will assign the weights for each edge. The rest of the entries will still remain zero. So for an edge V1 to V2 of weight W, we would set adjacency matrix of V1 of V2 to W. So for this weighted graph of six vertices and five edges, the adjacency matrix would look like this. Adjacency matrix is as simple as a 2D array of integers. If you have ever used a 2D array, then you already know how to code an adjacency matrix. Okay. Now, let us look at the adjacency list. Adjacency list is one of the most efficient representations of a graph. In the simplest terms, an adjacency list is an array of linked lists, where each linked list belongs to each vertex. So, formally defining it, an adjacency list is an array of pointers of size V plus 1, where each pointer is the head pointer of a linked list. Each node in the linked list will contain information about one edge in the graph. For example, consider this graph of four vertices and four edges. Since we have four vertices, we would have an array of size 5, where each element is a pointer to a linked list. Take vertex 3, for example. It has two adjacent vertices, vertex 2 and vertex 4. So, for the linked list corresponding to vertex 3, we would have two integers, 2 and 4. This node in the linked list, which holds integer 2, denotes that vertex 2 is adjacent to vertex 3 because it is a part of vertex 3's adjacency list. So, the node with integer 4 corresponds to the edge vertex 3 to vertex 4. Since there are no other adjacent vertices to vertex 3, this linked list ends here. Similarly, for vertex 4, Vertex 2 is adjacent to it, so the node with integer 2 corresponds to the edge vertex 4 to vertex 2. Now, vertex 2 has no adjacent vertices, so the linked list belonging to vertex 2 will be empty. The linked list belonging to vertex 1 will have one node which corresponds to vertex 1 to vertex 2. If you have worked with a linked list before, you know that we need to define a node. Now, as explained, Adjacency list is an array of linked lists. So by doing this, we constructed an empty adjacency list of size 5. Now let us populate it with edges. Adding an edge to adjacency list is nothing more than adding a node to a linked list. This is just a rough example, but in a proper program, you would call a method which would do linked list head insertion for you. So re-emphasizing again, an adjacency list is an array of linked lists. This array would be of size V plus 1 because we will have one linked list for each vertex. And how many linked list nodes would we have in total? We would have one linked list node for each edge. So 
that would mean we have order of e nodes in total. So the space complexity of an adjacency list becomes order of v plus e. Let us look at another example of an adjacency list. This time, let us consider a weighted graph. So even in this case, our concept of having a linked list for each vertex remains the same. Our concept of having a node for each edge also remains the same. The only change is that our linked list node stores an extra integer, which is the weight of the edge. So if we take the edge vertex 2 to vertex 4, for example, in the linked list associated with vertex 2, we would have a node with integer 4, which denotes that it is adjacent to vertex 2 and another integer minus 2, which denotes that the weight of the edge is minus 2. Now, let us compare the two graph representations we just learned. We know that adjacency list is more space efficient than adjacency matrix because adjacency list space complexity is order of v plus e, which is better than order of v square. Inserting an edge into adjacency matrix and adjacency list both take constant time because in the case of adjacency matrix, you have direct access to a cell where you can just set the corresponding entry to one. And in the case of adjacency list, you could follow head insertion of a linked list to add the new edge in constant time. However, deleting an edge is faster in adjacency matrix. This is because in adjacency matrix, you have direct access to the cell where you can just reset the entry. But for an adjacency list, you have to traverse the whole linked list to find the exact node you want to delete. So, edge deletion in adjacency list takes order of e time, which is a lot slower than adjacency matrix, which takes constant time. Adjacency matrix is very simple to code, but using adjacency list for the standard graph algorithms offers better time complexities. I personally prefer using adjacency list, but adjacency matrix is a quick and easy option. Now, let us look at the code for adjacency list in Java. All my codes are available on my GitHub. I will leave a link in the description below. For now, I have it opened in my NetBeans. So going through the code, this is my linked list node. It has two integers, vertex and weight. Vertex denotes the destination vertex of the edge and weight denotes the weight of the edge. Coming to the main function, I have a few helper variables declared and then I start off by scanning the number of vertices and edges. Then I create an array of node references of size vertices plus 1. This is my adjacency list. Currently it is empty, so I start adding edges into it. So I keep scanning edges, which is a set of three variables v1, v2 and w which denote the edge v1 to v2 of weight w. Once I have them, I call add edge method and then I pass the adjacency list of v1, which is the linked list corresponding to v1 and I'm telling my method that I want to add a node v2 of weight w. If we head down to add edge method, we can see that all it does is head insertion of a node in linked list. So it creates a new node, adds it to the head and returns the new head. So this line essentially adds the edge v1 to v2. If I wanted to make this a bidirectional graph, I would simply uncomment this line, which adds the edge v2 to v1. If you see, all I've done is interchange v1 and v2. Now I want to print my adjacency list. So I'm calling a utility method print. If we head down to print, uh, we can see that all it does is iterate through each element in the array and print out all the nodes in the linked list corresponding to it. Then I'm scanning three variables v1, v2 and w to demonstrate deletion of an edge. So once I have them, I call delete edge method to which I pass adjacency list of v1, which is essentially the linked list corresponding to v1 and the node which I want to delete, where the destination vertex is v2 of weight w. So if we head down to delete edge method, all it does remove a node from a linked list and it returns the new head. And then I print out my adjacency list. So uh, let's run this code. So if we keep it simple, 
let's say I have a graph of three vertices and two edges. There is an edge from one to two of weight four and there is an edge from three to two of weight three. Okay, so as you can see, adjacency list of one says there is a linked list which has only one node where the destination vertex is two and the edge has a weight of four. Similarly, adjacency list of three says it is a linked list which has one node where the destination vertex is two and the weight is three. Now let's try to delete the edge three to two. As you can see, it is deleted from the linked list. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. And if you like the content on my channel, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so that you get notified whenever I post a new video.